So we've just reached the cable car entrance now. The car park's right empty. We're just up there. So I think there's bars and restaurants at the top, but as you can see, it was right up to the top. There's an old cast bar on the top of the hill, which is where it goes. Old King of Morocco. You have to, in every business, you have to have a picture of him up there. <laughs> so it's a 1.6 kilometer journey, and from the bottom to the top, it takes roughly eight minutes. After an airy eight minutes, we made it to the top. This is the old Caspar. Caspar. She started calling it a Casper for some reason. But from what I got, it was damaged by an earthquake many moons ago. But what you do get when you get to the top is this amazing view of Agadir. Massive all around that bay there. The old hilltop Kasbah of Agadir is a place of incredible history and cultural significance. Dating back to the 16th century, it's witnessed centuries of trade, commerce and conflict. Today we'll explore the fascinating story of this ancient fortress. The Kasbah of Agadir, like so many in Morocco, was the beating heart of its trade and commerce. Located at the top of the hill overlooking the city, it was a perfect location for merchants to gather and do business. Goods from across North Africa and Europe would pass through the Kasbah, making it the centre of exchange for centuries. Walking through the narrow alleys and streets of other Kasbahs, it's easy to imagine what life was like here centuries ago. Buildings being made of traditional wooden straw, an architecture like anything else in the world. Some of the houses in the Kasbah are being restored to their former glory, giving visitors a glimpse into what life was like in this ancient fortress. These houses feature traditional Moroccan decor and furnishings and are a fascinating insight into the daily lives of people who once called the Kasbah home. From the top of the Kasbah we can see the stunning views of the city and the surrounding landscape. The blue waters of the Atlantic Ocean stretch out to the west while the rolling hills and mountains of Morocco lie to the east. It is truly a breathtaking sight and a reminder of the incredible natural beauty that surrounds Agadir. The Kasbah's history is a complex one, marked by both triumph and tragedy. In 1960, Agadir was hit by a devastating earthquake that destroyed much of the city, including the Kasbah. Thousands of people lost their lives and the city was left in ruins. But the people of Agadir were determined to rebuild and they've since worked tirelessly to create a new city that honours its past while looking to the future. And despite the earthquake of 1960, even in ruins, the Kasbah is a powerful symbol of Agadir's rich and cultural heritage. Archaeologists have been working tirelessly to preserve what remains of the Kasbah and to uncover new insights into the lives of the people who once lived and worked here. The old hilltop Kasbah of Agadir is a powerful symbol of the city's past and present and it's a reminder of the resilience and the spirit of the people of Agadir.
So I thought I'd take this opportunity just to give you a quick tour of the pitch that we're on. So obviously, let's get as tight to the hedge as physically possible. There's the camels. So since I've started working, that's where I've been putting the desk. So the sun comes up over there, but the trees give me shade in the morning. We obviously put our Aztec style blanket there. That's to keep the sun off my back. And obviously the sun comes and sets over there, as you can see there. So then we get the protection from the sun canopy and from the camper. Kadak, baby sterilizer and milk maker. Now that's the carpet for the awning. But obviously we don't always put the awning up, but it's nice just to have a bit of a carpet down underneath the sun canopy. Uh, there's the bedroom. The bed's not been made. Well, it's been made, but we're just doing some washing at the moment. So that's why there's no... Uh, pillowcases on the pillows. That outdoor revolution uh, heater forward slash fan has been an absolute godsend. Uh, obviously hot in the winter, cold in the summer, or at least gets the air circulating. Over here, we've got our driveway awning. So like I said, we've got the, the porch door add-on on the back makes a massive difference. We've normally been putting the toilet back there, but obviously we bought a toilet tent when we came out. And then this is the inside of the awning. It's just where we use just to store stuff rather than having stuff, you know, in every nook and cranny of the camper van. And then a little, um, and now we've got the toilet tent. Well, it's very, very, very hot, very hot indeed.